Welcome to my podcast episode, From One Culture to Another, The Stories, Struggles, and Support. Transitioning from one culture to another is what we call culture shock. It can be exciting, scary, or even traumatic depending on the situation. I moved here to Boise just last year in August. I'm originally from a very tiny island in the Pacific Ocean called Saipan. And yes, I know, you're probably wondering where the heck that is. I get it all the time from my Uber drivers, new friends that I've met, my professors, co-workers, literally everyone. Sometimes I just tell people that I'm from somewhere in Hawaii to avoid the usual questions like, do you get to go back home for the holidays? Do you speak English there? Are you a U.S. citizen? Or my favorite is, how did you end up all the way here? When I first came here to Boise, I was awestruck. I couldn't believe that I was about to spend the next few years here. I came to Boise with a cohort of other students, thankfully, that are from Saipan too. Our first impression was the smell. We arrived during the summertime, so it just felt like a sting of heavy, dry air. And even though we were used to the humid, salty air that came with a smooth breeze, everyone was still excited, carrying everything from back home that we could fit into our luggages. We were amazed in the car to Boise State. And after we settled in, we decided to walk downtown to find something to eat. Since everything on campus was closed at the time, it was still early on August. We ended up eating at Panda Express since it was the only place that had rice. Rice is eaten with every meal back home, and I'm not even exaggerating. Almost everyone that lived in Saipan owned their own rice cooker or just used a portable stove lit from butane gas and cooked their own rice that way. After dinner, we headed back to our dorms, which felt like a hotel to us at the time. I mean, come on. There were elevators, TVs in the common room, free Wi-Fi, air conditioning. It all felt fancy. We all hung out at the common room area and started bursting with emotions. Everything looked and felt like it was from a movie. We didn't sleep till 4 a.m. that night. We discovered the feeling of being jet-lagged, and it was awful. Saipan and Boise has about a 16-hour time difference, which is pretty tough. So we showed up to orientation the next morning, all sleepy-eyed and exhausted. We definitely weren't ready to get up and socialize, but our excitement got the best of us, and we went to orientation anyway. The sub was packed with new faces, and campus was so huge. I thought I would never remember which building was where. And to be honest, it all felt a bit overwhelming to me, but I tried to keep up with the excitement that everyone else was feeling. It really did feel like a dream. It wasn't until school started rolling in and reality hit. It felt so hard to talk to other people and make connections with other students too. I felt like an outsider in all my classes and almost everywhere I went on campus. There were so many times I considered calling my parents back home and telling them that I wanted to get a ticket to fly back home as soon as possible. Winter came, and it got even worse. I never wanted to leave my room. I would spend so much time on my phone, talking to friends back home, or watching videos my family would send me on Snapchat. It's rough, especially on the holidays, with no family to spend it with. Eventually, I reached a point where I accepted it. I came out here for a reason, and that was to get a college degree and get back to my tiny island one day. I decided that I wanted to stop feeling sorry for myself and started living in the moment and embracing the decision that I made. Interestingly, I read an article by Brandy Yale, the director of admissions from the University of Houston. Yale explained that there are four different stages of culture shock, excitement, frustration, adjustment, and adaptation. Looking back on my story of culture shock, I realized that I felt all of these things. I began to wonder, how other students who experienced culture shock felt and how they were supported. Here at Boise State, we have a group of students from the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, also known as CNMI, which is where Saipan is. Boise State has a special connection with the CNMI. Before we moved here, Gerard Van Gills, who was the founder of the Million Dollar Scholars Program, which aims to send kids in the CNMI to college, advocated for us. He worked hard to get Boise State to provide us with scholarships and support in order for us to attend college and get a degree, in hopes of bringing back what we learned to the islands one day. It may not seem like a big deal, but it is. Back home, a bachelor's degree is something that is very uncommon. We lack educated people back home. 
Actually, a lot of my teachers in high school were not even teachers that had a background in the subject that they taught. And a lot of that is because the majority of the population lives in a poverty cycle, going from paycheck to paycheck, saving every penny they found. You can imagine that in some situations, sending kids to college in certain families is the least of their concern. Luckily, with the support of the Million Dollar Scholars Program, and with this newfound support for Boise State, students have access to affordable higher education opportunities, even though those opportunities come with a cost, which is traveling far away from home. I am actually a part of the scene in my cohort, and I decided to interview a few of my peers to hear their stories and their experiences with culture shock. My first interview is Aaron Ugumaro, who is part of the scene in my cohort. He shares his perspective on culture shock and how he dealt with it and the support that he was given. He is currently a freshman studying psychology. He is also half Jamoro and half Carolinian, which are the indigenous races in Saipan. He was also born and raised in Saipan. Studies have shown that there are four stages to culture shock. There's the excitement stage, frustration stage, adjustment stage, and also the adaptation stage. Um, can you please describe if you've ever felt any of these stages and how have you dealt with it? Um, so there's, without a doubt, I felt all these stages uh, during the time that I've been here. Um, coming to Boise, I felt excited about seeing new things, being new to all the experiences that I've never faced before. And um, later along the line, I felt frustrated because I didn't, I realized that I didn't know how people would act and how the weather would have a big impact on you. But uh, I learned to adjust to my setting and it allowed me to adapt. And uh, given that I was a major minority to this group or this place, I knew that um, things are definitely harder on my end because uh, most people did not face what I faced before. I dealt with it by reaching out to my advisors and people that I learned to trust out here. And I also kept close contact with my friends and family here and back home. Is there any advice that you would like to give to someone who's listening that is experiencing culture shock or those that are not experiencing culture shock that could possibly help support these people that are experiencing these things? I would uh, say to definitely reach out to people that they know that they could trust and people that they're used to. And I would say to Always keep a positive mindset because you will learn how to uh, deal with everything eventually. I think Aaron had faced a lot of challenges and felt a lot of different emotions while experiencing culture shock. And I find it really interesting how he talked about how he's a major minority here at Boise State. And it was really the hard truth. It's amazing how from his experiences of culture shock, he was better able to be more mindful and stronger mentally. I do agree that the support that um, he found really helps the transition. So when we first arrived here as a cohort, we had no idea how everything works around here, finding a place to live, how to feel more involved in campus, and all of that stuff. So whenever we reached out to like faculty or counselors, um, they were always willing to help us no matter what the question was. So as mentioned earlier, culture shock is found to be evident when leaving home to study in a new country. Culture shock is the impact of moving from your own culture to the one that is new to you. It deals with adjusting to new, unfamiliar environments, creating new friendships, and just learning the new way of life. It also deals with the shock of leaving behind the people that you love or are comfortable with having around. Factors that contribute to culture shock include, but are not limited to, the climate, language, social roles or rules of behavior as Aaron mentioned, values, and relationship stress from being away from your old support system back home. It is a big deal, and as you can imagine. However, I believe that the key to overcoming these culture shock struggles is to open yourself up to opportunities and new support systems. When you open yourself up to opportunities, you'll begin to see yourself grow in a way you've never thought possible. 
Try all the new food, attend events, try to open yourself up to the new people around you. If you aren't the one experiencing culture shock, open yourself up to those that are. Help them feel comfortable. Support systems are another key element to overcoming culture shock. I find it really evident that finding balance between the old support system and the new one that is formed abroad helps out a lot. Feeling supported by new friends, mentors, coworkers, and even the university as a whole goes a long way with people who experience culture shock. I am glad to say that I feel supported by the new friendships I have made, my current work environment, the faculty and staff of Boise State, <clears throat> my own cohort that I came with, and even Boise State University as a whole. <clears throat> Thank you for listening to my podcast.